This is the Nokia E5. Now I'm joined by John Barrow, the Witch mobile phone expert. He's going to tell us a bit about it. So John, I know that the E means that it's a business phone. Yeah, that's right. It's, uh, it's from the E series of Nokia business devices. Um, E5 shows it sort of in the middle of the range. It's not one of the cheapest E, e series phones, but it's also not the top. So what's interesting about this handset or unique? Well, the main thing you'll see is it's got a QWERTY keypad. It's pretty typical of business devices. People like them for uh, emailing, writing long text messages, um, sort of editing documents, all those things. And the, the E5 can do all of those. Um, it's got an email system, as you'd expect. So we get full email messages and attachments. Um, I suppose the slight difference with this phone is we've seen a lot of advanced smartphones which have multiple home pages and they're typically touchscreen phones, so you can slide the page one way and get one home screen and slide it another way. You can't do that on this phone, but it does have dual modes, and what I mean by that is you have a personal mode and a business mode, so you can have different home pages set up uh, with different shortcuts and different links depending on uh, the time of day and what you're using. Okay, so the business and the personal modes on this look very similar at the moment but you could sync them with different calendars, your work calendar and your Facebook calendar, perhaps. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, when it's your personal time, you might want to have links directly to, say, the music player or the camera or those sort of things. Well, um, as you say, at work, you might want more access to emails or any sort of editing tools, that sort of thing. Now, this looks like uh, the Nokia Symbian operating system. Uh, which version is it? It's Symbian S60, so it's the sort of typical one you'd find on the E-Series. It's the same as we saw on the Nokia E72. Um, so that means it's very familiar. If you've used the Nokia before, you'll be instantly able to use this. Um, sort of quite grid-based and list-based as opposed to sort of uh, some of the more uh, interesting newer operating systems like things you'd see on the iPhone 4, for example. But it's pretty familiar and works well. And, you know, it's got a reasonable uh, processor, so things zip along at a decent speed. And it's not all about business. Um, Symbian 60 gives uh, access to the OV store, so you can download applications as well as sort of music and that sort of thing. Okay, now you talked about the keypad. I quite like the layout, nice big space bar. But what other features does it have, such as the camera or music playing capabilities? Yeah, if you flip it over there, Ben, you'll see the camera on the back. Um, five megapixel, we're seeing sort of an increase in megapixels all the time, you know, eight, even 12. Five megapixels is pretty good. Um, we'll test it in our lab to see how it performs because megapixels is not a guarantee of quality, but five megapixels sounds all right. A bit surprised to see it's fixed focus. Um, normally all but the cheapest phones have an autofocus in there, so that's quite a surprise. You can record video, but it's just 15 frames per second, so you won't be shooting a Hollywood blockbuster on this one. I can see that it's got a flash as well. Yeah, LED, so it's not going to compete with a Xenon flash like you'd find on your own camera at home. Um, but, you know, hopefully it should give enough light for dim light conditions and uh, you can use it as a torch, actually. Interestingly, it doesn't just flick on and off. And I can see it's got a 3.5mm headphone socket on the top. Yeah, that's quite nice. So you can plug in your own headphones and also um, sometimes they're in the side there, which can be a bit awkward if you're in the pocket. It sits nicely in the top and there's music player and FM radio. So, yeah, a few sort of entertainment features, but I would imagine most people using this will be getting it for work. How big's the screen? It's quite small. Um, I mean, it's fairly typical of a non-touchscreen phone. Obviously, when you've got touchscreen, you can get rid of the keypad. So you have a lot more space. Um, that one there, pretty small. Um, it's not ideal for things like web browsing, I would say. You're not going to use this phone if you're going to be online a lot of the time because um, the internet pages look quite small. Also, because it's not touchscreen, it's not as easy to navigate around. You can't sort of pinch to zoom, for example. Um, but for you know, general everyday use, it's probably adequate. Yeah, I'm looking at some of the pictures now. They do look quite good, but they take a little time to load up. What's the um, processing capabilities of this phone? Uh, we're on a, a 600 megahertz processor, which is, uh, you know, it, it's not up there with one gigahertz as we've seen on the top of the range phones, but it's not too bad. So I guess it's got web connectivity, including HSDPA and Wi-Fi. Yeah, so internet speed should be pretty decent. In fact. It's got all the specifications you'd really expect from a, a mid-range business phone, and we look forward to testing them, seeing how they'll perform in our lab. OK, so that's the Nokia E5. We'll have those lab results and the full review on our website in October. But until then, check out our website for more mobile phone reviews at witch.co.uk.